Okay, so a few notes on how to approach dynamics problems in general. So dynamics is basically things that deal with forces and ending up describing motion. And since you're dealing with forces, usually dynamics problems are ones that include Newton's second law. Newton's second law is sum of forces equals the mass times the acceleration. All right. So the best way to approach these type of problems is to draw a picture so that you can see what's going on. So think about your, your problem, try and draw it out so that you can see, keep track of what things are standing on or how they're supported, that sort of thing. Then you want to label your coordinate axes. Often, as we have in the past, we'll do plus y and plus x, plus y will be up and plus x will be to the right. However, that's not always the case. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you is when you're choosing a coordinate axis to make your life much easier, there are two ways that you can approach it. One, don't be afraid to redraw your coordinate axes after the next step when we deal with free body diagrams, but make certain you keep track of it. You want to set these guys up to reduce the amount of math you have to do. Because if you're dealing with an inclined plane at some angle theta, then that's going to make your forces point all off in wonky angles if you use this regular this regular coordinate axis. In fact, on almost every inclined plane, it's best to have your plus x axis point along the plane and your plus y axis, because they've got to be at 90 degrees to one another, pointed up from the plus x. So it's at a 90 degree angle with the plane there. One of the best ways, if you don't know what you want to do to try and choose your coordinate axis. Think about if there's any type of motion, like for our object on an inclined plane, usually it'll move up or down the plane. What you want to do is set up a coordinate axis, coordinate axis, where all the movement is in one direction or dimension. Basically all of it in the x-axis or the y-axis, but not both, okay? Because acceleration up here is a vector. So if you have all of the motion, all the acceleration in one direction, you don't have to worry about splitting that acceleration up, which makes things a lot more complicated if you have to. So, the best way to choose a coordinate system is to take a look at your picture, think, hey, if stuff starts moving, how's it going to move? With an inclined plane, it's probably going to slide down or up the inclined plane. That means I want one of my coordinate axes pointed right along that plane, because that way the acceleration of the block sliding down or being pulled up is all going to be in one direction, okay? That's the best way to approach these to put your coordinate axes. You can also, after you've done your drawing, and if you've got a good idea of where you want your coordinate axes, the next step is to do a free body diagram. Free body diagrams are the little dots where you draw forces coming off, normal force, gravity, and any other forces that you may have, okay? It's a place where you can visualize and easily keep track of all the forces that you have acting on something. Then after you've got your picture, your free body diagram, so your picture that helps you fill in your free body diagram because being able to see it makes it a lot easier to try and see, hey, what are my forces? Where are they acting on this? Fill in your free body diagram, then you apply Newton's second law. And you're going to get some equations. You'll just go through and do math, solve those equations to get your answer. 
you may be getting information out of those equations, like the acceleration, that you'll then have to plug into something else that you know how to do, like kinematics. Sometimes I'll ask you, like, stopping distance of cars, that sort of thing, or how far something's going to slide, or how fast it's going if it's on an inclined plane. When it slides down to the bottom, how fast is it going to end up going? Okay, so there are a lot of different things that I can ask, but in general, when you're dealing with forces, these are the steps. You draw your picture so that it's easy to imagine and keep track of everything that's happening to it. Also, when you draw your picture, you can get a good idea of what any, the direction of any motion, and that lets you set up your coordinate system. Okay, once you have your coordinate system set up, you can draw your free body diagram and draw all of your forces in. What you'll need to do then is apply Newton's second law, and if you've got forces, which sometimes you will, where you've got your normal force up like this, say on an inclined plane, and your force of gravity down like this, you may need to split them into components, right? So I've got my x component here, my y component here, just like over here on the inclined plane. Remember, Newton's second law deals with vectors. so. When you're adding up vectors, you've got to keep track of direction. So if need be, split those vectors into components, just solving the triangle like we've done many times before. And then you plug in your different equations, you fill in information that you know, you move things around to try and replace stuff you don't know, and then you should be able to get whatever answer you're looking for. So, one more reminder on this, draw your picture, label your coordinate axes, free body diagram, split your forces into components so that you can fill in your Newton's second law, and then finally solve all of the equations and find your answer.